Why do people traumatize themselves? And this is a kind of strange question or a strange observation to make because you might be thinking to yourself, what do you mean people don't traumatize themselves? People don't want to experience trauma. People don't want to go through such hardships and all of this. But it is actually true. People actually kind of do traumatize themselves in a way that has been kind of objective throughout history. And you might be thinking, well, what might that actually be? And that's through cowardice. Cowardice is a way in which we traumatize ourselves and our potential. You could say it's self-inflicted trauma. And this is something that is ancestral. You could say that this is existent on the ancestral level. You could say this is continuous. This has been happening for since the dawn of man, since whenever man was created. He has always fallen to the whims of cowardice and to being a coward in front of adversity or in front of the unknown. And this is something that we always have to tackle. The reason for this, of course, is because when we face the unknown, we are threatened by the unknown. We are threatened by things in which we do not know. We are threatened by, you know, and this is something that we find fearful, the unknown. We are, we are, in, we are scared of the unknown. We don't know what to expect. Expectation is not understood when facing an unknown situation. And this is something that a lot of young men, a lot of young women have to deal with when growing up. And it's something that is limiting our potential. And it's something that is limiting a lot of young people today. But we're not going to be going into like the biological aspect of what ancestral trauma is that's related to the you know, epigenetics and biology and um, how it's associated to the genome and all of this type of stuff. We're not going to go into that. We're going to go into something that's more pragmatic, something more practical, something that makes more kind of just sense. Instead of going into the biological aspects of all these things that we cannot actually see with our own eyes, let's talk about something that we can experience and can fulfill and outline and purge with our own experience of our own lives on a daily situation. So how do we purge this thing which we could call ancestral trauma? How do we purge cowardice from ourselves? And really it comes down to a couple of fundamentals. And it's got to do with the mind and the body and how it's interacting in our present moment and how we rely on the two and the interconnected elements of how we function in symbiosis with them. So, for example, speed and urgency are necessary to overcome cowardice. And what do I mean by that speed? I don't mean the drug or anything like that in relation to speed or anything, but I mean the fact and the mo and the the process of urgency, being urgent with your actions. Because there's something that urgency actually counteracts in the moment, which is rumination, ruminating, pondering, foreboding within our minds and our thoughts about what the future may hold for us, or what may happen, because we don't know what's going to happen, because we're, si we're facing a situation that is unknown to us. And this is the problem, when we don't have urgency, when we don't have speed in our actions, we end up stagnating, we end up being at zero miles per hour, we end up, and you know, and when the, the whole rhythm of life within you doesn't start functioning properly, and it doesn't create momentum, we start to stagnate. And you see this, when people don't have urgency, when people are stuck in their heads alternatively, by not being urgent with their actions, we end up in a situation where we start pondering about things. We start, you know, thinking about what could happen, what might happen, what might not happen, expectations. Would this person accept me? Do they, would they find me interesting? What, what bar or level of, you know, uh, perfectionism do I need to fulfill to achieve some sort of acceptance? All of this rubbish that we start thinking about within our heads. And this is the complete opposite of urgency and speed and having action in our daily lives with whatever we want to do. And the problem with this is that when we're in one of these situations, of course, we end up stagnating and then we start brooding. But interestingly enough, when this starts happening, we then start to see anxiety pop up. We start to maybe maybe even see depression pop up. And I'm not saying that depression is because we ruminate too much, but I would say that the person who stagnates more in the 
desires of wanting to act and not acting is more likely to, de to be depressed than the person who acts with speed and urgency in the things that they want to achieve. And this is the difference. Because depression is a depressing of everything. Pushing everything down or pushing everything, let's say, up into a isolated space. You could say that is what depression is. It's pushing your, you could say, your thumos, your vitality into a certain place where it cannot be expressed. And what is it that you're doing when you're ruminating and you are fulfilling yourself, filling yourself with anxiety and ruminating thoughts, specifically thoughts in the mind that don't escape the mind and don't interact with the body because there's not that, that symbiosis, there's not that clear, transparent communication between the body and the mind. But when everything is stuck in the mind, we end up having these, you could say, outcomes of anxiety, of depression in a sense, or anything along these lines which limit us and keep us um, not developing our potential fundamentally. And this is what you see, and this is what I think is fundamental. You need urgency in your actions. You need to stop ruminating on what could be possible and what isn't possible. And I think this is the best way to cut out any of this thing of cowardice. Because cowardice is when we are stuck in our heads too much, and we are thinking too much, and we, um, we fall back on what we want or what we desire to have. Because we think that we're not going to be accepted, or we think that we're not good enough, or, or that our ambitions, our will, our drive is faulty in a sense. Because we stay in our minds too much and we think about the things that we never actually find out could have happened. And that's when you get cowardice. So cowardice is really fundamentally wanting to be comfortable. And of course it's more comfortable to not face the unknown. If you don't face the unknown, you are going to be more comfortable because you're going to be in a facility and in a space of your own which you are most understood in. You're not going to be in a place where you're going to have any unexpected possibilities happening. But if you don't have the unexpected possibilities, or if you don't face a situation that is unexpected, then you cannot bridge the gap between what you are now and the potential in which you could be in the future. And that's what it is all about. Potency. Potent. Potential. You need to forward yourself to fulfill that potency within you and that's what potential is vitality concentration the concentrated part of your psyche your soul your will whatever it is and that which goes forward and above and yeah it's all about the comfortable space the space of comfort the comfort zone if you don't leave the comfort zone then you're not going to fulfill your potential fundamentally. And it's interesting because the comfort zone kind of pushes itself further and further because the more you overcome, the more you face adversity or the more you face the unknown, the further the comfort zone kind of uh, kind of expands out in a sense. And then you kind of, you could say with your, within your own frame, you become confident in these other places of which before you did you were not confident in so this could be regarding to like being more social uh, going out on dates with relationships getting used to dating with women or men whoever you are you know and you know whether it be business as well doing business proposals with individuals that you look up to or you want to work with any of this type of stuff and it's always pushing yourself out so that you are more comfortable in these environments. So it's getting your bubble of understanding and pushing it out so that within, the, within that realm of your own world, you become confident in those places in which you are going to succeed in. And that's fundamentally what it is. So to me, in a sense, purging these, to really purge, to get rid of these issues that we have with cowardice is to have speed and urgency in our actions because then we're occupied we're occupied with the actions we're making in the real world we're not occupied 
with the crap and the expectations of all these things which we end up ruminating on, which are just a waste of time because there's no backing of it, there's no experience to back that, you know, self-illusion or self-delusion in which we give ourselves in those situations. But when I actually say this, this makes little sense in the fact that when you are in the comfort zone of your own mind, of what you do on a daily basis, you do rot and you stagnate and you turn into something that is so shit. It can get worse and worse. The more you, you stagnate in the comfort zone, it gets worse. And that's, na that's, that's a natural law. That's the law of nature. I mean, if you put something... Let's just say you get a car, right? And the car is fine because it, it drove to a place. But because you've parked up, you leave it there for a year, you leave it there for two years... What's it going to become? It's going to get rusty, it's going to get affected by the weathering, the environment. It's going to... Loads of things are going to happen to it that are just going to make it shit. Because nothing is working, it's not being... You have to see yourself as, like, in a sense, a supercar, a sports car. You know, you've got the mechanics there, you need to make sure they're well-oiled. You need to make sure that they're processing themselves. You need to... You need to check these things and you need to function them in the, in the right way in the real world otherwise these things are just going to stagnate sit in a space which is going to make yourself rot and become a less of yourself than what you could be and your potential is just going to disappear over time until you look back and yourself like oh shit i could have done a bit more than that but i didn't do anything or i could have i could have tried these things but i never did and then I regret it, and then you have regret. And then, because of the cowardice as well, the cowardice is self-perpetuating. So the more you are a coward to yourself, the more you are a coward to your potential, the more you're going to self-deprecate, the more you're going to see yourself as shit, the more you're going to, you're going to, your self-perception is going to be um, faulty and poor. And it's not going to... So it's the more... It's, it's, it's strange. The more... It's like a, a tank of water, let's say. The more the more cowardice that you... Or the more you fail and falter at the things that you want to succeed in. Or at least try. That you never actually try because you're in fear of the outcomes of trying. The more that tank fills up. And it just keeps filling up. Until you do do those things. Which allows the tank to empty. And for you to have your own self-respect. And all these things start to depreciate. Like your self-respect. Your integrity. You lose any sense or desire for having accountability. So maybe you might just falter and just be like, well, nothing really matters anymore. And then you fall into this cycle of depression. And this happens a lot of the time with people. You fall into depression, anxiety, social anxiety, any of these things. And it's all because of this thing of cowardice. Which is, which is a form of self-inflicted trauma. Because we are outing ourselves, we are disappointing our future selves for comfort in the in the now, which is so strange. But that's the situation, and that's what happens. So yeah, you've got to perceive yourself as a vehicle which needs to be moved, which is designed to move, which is designed to act in the world like a car. A car is built so it drives in two different directions. This is what, you know, this is the same thing as the human body, you know, so there's different ways in which this can be applied, you know, you need to build yourself up, you need to know thyself, whether it be with anything, like nutrition, you want to build a better body, you want to get more confident, you want to build a better frame, you want to participate in, in a, going to the gym, working out, getting a personal trainer, doing all these things, going out more socializing more, getting used to all of these things so that you can develop into that thing in which you want to become in the future so you fulfill that potential. For example, I'll give you a personal example. Before I left home, I'm 22, before I left home, I kind of had this resting anxiety in my body because I could sense and feel that I was relying upon the comfortable aspects of living with my family, living with my parents and all of this. And I was like... There was a resting element of anxiety within me, but then as soon as I went out and I put myself in a situation which was completely new, put loads of responsibilities underneath myself, or at least on top of myself, to hold up, 
to fulfill my own potential, I, then that, that resting anxiety actually disappeared, which is really interesting. And it's fundamentally, and it's weird because it's, it was isolated in the body. In a, I think it was a breathing situation. It's like I, I always had to breathe. I had to go. I could never catch my breath sometimes. And it was, it was very strange. But this disappeared when you give yourself urgency and you give yourself speed to actions that you want to fulfill to, to, to allow yourself to grow as a person. Because then you're urgent. You're, you're, give, you're giving yourself things to do that you want to do that you know will help your own development. And when that happens, a lot of these other things, you, when that happens, your body is in action. Not just your mind. This is the thing. The mind replaces the body when we are in places of comfort. And you could say there are a lot of people who say depression doesn't even exist. People even say this. I'm not agreeing with that um, view of things, but I do think that a lot of people's depression can be perturbed and changed and, dis and, and, and can go away if people actually apply their life in, an, in a way which allows the body to act in the real world instead of just the mind. Because in a comfortable position, you are not really acting out. You are not using your body. Like, think of the film Wally, right? And you've got all these fat people in these big chairs. And they're not acting. They're not moving their body. They're not putting action into the world. They are just perpetuating the functions of their mind. And what are they doing? They're consuming all these things. They're in a comfortable position. They don't need to move. They don't need to face adversity. They don't need to face the unknown. Everything that they occupy themselves with is what they know and what they are given. You know, they've, you know, you could say fall into the, to the matrix of the feminine or the devouring mother or something like this because they are just consuming what is being given to them by the thing which controls them which they've allowed, which they have allowed to control them, fundamentally. And now you have situations where it's like, people are always going on about dopamine levels, that, or people need to go on a dopamine detox because they're, because they're stimulating their minds in an artificial way so much that it's not actually real anymore. It's like a hyper-real simulation in which they're stimulating towards their minds. And, you know, like things like uh, social media, and it's crazy because it's all got to do with the mind. It's got nothing to do with the body. And we're having all of these issues in our modern society with individuals who are completely covered with anxiety, social anxiety, all of these issues, depression. And we're living in a world where we're only stimulated by the mind and we're living in comfortable situations. You know, the whole, even the whole idea of the, the Great Reset or the... You know, you own nothing and be happy. It's based on this idea of comfort. It's based on this idea that you will be comfortable and you will be happy because we're just going to allow you to be comfortable and that's what you want, which you don't want. And, you know, the idea that you're going to rent everything, you're not going to own anything, you're not going to have any responsibilities because responsibilities actually make your life more meaningful. So it's like... You know, you see this is is a mirroring of this same problem, where they want you to be cowards. People, these individuals who are high up, elitists, who are like wanting to fulfill even this agenda. Let's say as an example, they want you to be cowards, because they don't want you to fulfill your own potential, and they want you to own nothing and be happy. They don't want you to own yourself. You don't. They don't want you to, to own your own vitality, they want to drain it from you, and then they want, they want to like keep it for themselves and then sell it off to something or whatever and make loads of money. And It's not even about money, really, it's more about power. Because you could say that's more of the masculine drive, it's about power, it's about domination, you could say, in a sense, rather than money. Like people say, oh, I want to make loads of money, but really it's like you want to have power. Power over your, over your own life, power over situations, that you want to fulfill and want to be in control of so that other people don't take control of you. That's like a biological instinct to have your own, you know, to have your own place in which you are in power of. So it's 
It's crazy, you can apply these things to all of these other fundamental changes in modern society. To the interpersonal level, psychologically, and then to the more macrocosmic level, whether it be to do with how they don't want you to be self-sufficient. Or they want to put something in your hand, or you know, a microchip in your hand like they do in Sweden, or like as they're trying to start up in Sweden. Because they don't want you to be responsible. They want to be the ones in which take away your responsibilities. And that's when you get the womb idea of you living and existing in a metaphysical womb or metaphorical, I mean, womb, where everything's just kind of taken care of, taken care for you, and you're very vulnerable, but you don't have any backbone to support yourself in any of these situations. Because the backbone's been ripped out of you. You haven't evolved enough to have a backbone. And that's, again, another fundamental thing that they want. They, like, metaphorically take the backbone out of these individuals and put them in a womb where they're completely vulnerable, but we look after them and... Well, we don't look after them, we drain their potential, fundamentally. So, yeah, that's, that's like, that's how I kind of see these things. And it's like, this is the situation... And this is kind of the the ancestral element of trauma. Because it limits our potential. It limits what we can be or could be in the future. And we all want to be the best versions of ourselves. You know, no, if you, like, could go to God and you could, like, choose all the things that you'd want to be, you'd be like, oh, I want to be successful in this, I want to be confident, I want to achieve all of this, I want to have my own self-sufficient kind of financial system, I want financial freedom, I want freedom of movement, I want to be, you know, all of these things. You wouldn't pick, oh, I want to be anxious and awkward in social situations, I want to be, you know, physically weak, oh, I don't want to be able to, like, be financially free, I want to be a slave to the 9-to-5 job system, blah, blah, blah. Like, you wouldn't pick those things, would you? And this is it. It's, um, our society doesn't motivate the individuals within it to push beyond these limitations in which the society which doesn't support our own people fundamentally want to see in others so it's like and we need to change this fundamentally we need to put a dent into this an example of how I am personally trying to put a dent into this issue or at least to offer something to individuals is that I'm building out a program which is a network of coaches and this network of coaches is basically a place or a tribe in which people can join so they can come to understand themselves and develop elements of themselves in which they want to develop. So, for example, if you've got people on this, on this, on this coaching program, coaching network program, which are involved in personal training, fitness, nutrition, psychology, elements of spirituality that we're going to interfuse and interject with psychology, to help the kind of like interpersonal development with individuals and clients that come on. We've got people who are doing finances, so people that want to develop their financial freedoms, whether it be like through DeFi, crypto, hedge funds, stocks, any of these things. We're developing a platform for people to come on where it's a community who want to develop themselves in these different elements. It's not just specific, it's not just for this type of person or anything. It is for people who want to find their own tribe in a place in which so many people are alienated because we live in a alien nation. It's alienation. This world's alienated. And we need to find some sort of... We need to tackle the problem of these fundamental issues to build spaces and communities where we can help individuals. And this is not like a, oh, we're going to tell you how to be this and how to be that like so many other coaching programs especially in the manosphere or the manosphere red pill community there's so many programs that that try to basically i see it as indoctrinate young men to be what they what the coaches want to see in them to kind of like emanate themselves in like a narcissistic way and we're not for that we basically want to give tools it's like an anti-coaching coaching program we want to give people tools so that they can apply it to their own lives and infuse it into themselves, to educate themselves, to allow themselves to develop free thinking, because education is, doesn't even exist anymore. Like, education is so that you can think for yourself, 
doesn't exist. And that's what we want to actually achieve is for people to allow themselves to educate themselves, to give them the tools they need to develop those aspects of, them, of their lives that they want to develop. And that's fundamental to, to the program. We basically want you to fire us because we want to do the job so well. And that's what we're doing. We've got all sorts of people involved in this. Um, so if you want to get involved, go down to the link in the description or in the pinned comment section. You can get a free consultation call, which is completely free. You can just call up on the program. One of my guys will be talking to you or myself. And we're going to basically go through with you what the program's all about, how we can apply the program to what you're seeking and vice versa. And you're also going to fall into a community where you're going to be able to communi communicate with people who are seeking the same things as you are, but in different ways. So, and also there's going to probably be a discount with it as well, because we're running a pilot program for it. And we want to get at least the first 30 people on board with it to kind of, for the first month, experience it as much as possible so that we can then develop it out as much as we can to make it as best as we can. So yeah, if you're interested in that, make sure to go in the link uh, down below, check it out, check out the landing page, you'll be able to find out all the coaches who are involved, what they've been doing, what they've done in the past, their credentials, their qualifications, everything like that, and I'll see you inside.